How's it going, people? Good stuff. Tempered over burning witches. So you know it's damn good. I should have used my new uh, mug, but I want to clean it out first. I just bought it. How do you think? What do you think of this for improvement? <laughs> I'm listening to this soundtrack. Michael Mann's Manhunter, the first Lecter movie. Damn good movie. I mean, he made this, uh, like on summer break from Miami Vice. I forgot between what seasons. It's a very Miami Vice-y kind of movie. Except it, it holds up a little better than Miami Vice, which I still love, but really dated. When you see him pull out a car phone the size of a shoebox. I'm running on, excuse me. Let's get started. This is a long chapter. I've been debating whether I should break it into two. I don't want to break it in two, but it's long, and I think it covers some important stuff. Uh, I'm going to skip the masthead. Gives too much away. Yeah, here we go. And I got a little theory that I was forming the first time I read this. Uh, well, we'll get to that later. Verse 1 of chapter 30 of Alma. Behold, now it came to pass uh, that after the people of Ammon were established in the land of Jershom, yea, and also after the Lamanites were driven out of the land, and their dead were buried by the people of the land. Two. Now, their dead were not numbered because of the greatness of their numbers. Neither were the dead of the Nephites numbered. Sorry. I, it's a more perfect book than the Bible, but not as well documented. <laughs> Not that you can trust the Bible's numbers either, but at least they try. <sighs> but it came to pass heavenly. <clears throat> I think I'll have another in a minute. After they had buried their dead and also after the days of fasting and mourning and prayer in parenthesis, and it was the 16th year of the reign of the judges of the people of Nephi in parenthesis, that's a boring period of peace. Not completely boring. Actually, this is one of those chapters I was promising where something almost happens. I mean, it kind of does happen. Something. This is actually a very interesting chapter, especially for atheists. Want to see how they Straw man atheist in advance? Yeah, you're going to love this. <sighs> yeah, There began to be continual peace throughout the land, all the land. I gave that away, sorry. See, I'm remembering this book because I, I glanced it over and this one really stuck in my memory. It annoyed me the first time. I kind of find it amusing now. Three. Yay! And the people did observe to keep the commandments of the Lord, and they were strict in observing the, ex the ordinances of God according to the law of Moses, for they were taught to keep the law of Moses until it should be fulfilled. Where does it say that in uh, any of Moses' so-called writing? Including Deuteronomy, where he writes his own obituary. Where does Moses, or the Mosaic books, ever say, oh, and stop following this law after it's fulfilled by God having a kid who 
becomes a sacrificial symbolic lamb thing or something. And then suddenly everybody's uh, free of their guilt. Even serial killers and child molesters and politicians. Oh, that was low, sorry. There's a couple of good ones out there, I think. Yeah, all right. Four. And thus, the people did have no disturbance in all the 16th year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. So they didn't need that little part in parentheses in uh, verse 2. <laughs> Which tells us it was the 16th year of the reign of the judges also. But in parentheses, to interrupt the sentence. Which was interrupting itself. Uh, five. And it came to pass, and I'm glad of that. Is there a flame in the dark? Is there a bright heart? Still? Oh, I think I'll have another. These creatures look the same now. We <coughs> wherever we are. Very nice. And humorous. I love those Monty Python guys. Together and separately. I love them all. <sighs> That's so funny. Alright. It came to pass in the 17th year of the reign of the judges. There was continual peace. Just in case I forgot. The ashes and the fire That'll learn. That'll learn me. That'll learn me real good. Six. And it came to pass. The ashes and the fire In the latter end of the 16th year, which is BC 74, according to the asterisk, <coughs> uh, there came a man into the land of Zarahemla. And he was Antichrist! Pull up your skirts and scream. Be afraid. Be very afraid. <sighs> He was Antichrist. All right, well, let's see what an Antichrist is like. Apparently, I'm one of those, I guess. I hadn't thought of it that way before. I was more indifferent Christ before. Now I'm Anti. Okay. Four, he began to preach. He's a preacher. Okay, good. He's preaching unto the people against the prophecies which had been spoken by the prophets concerning the coming of Christ. Ugh. Imagine that. And he's preaching. You ever see atheists on the streets uh, getting everyone's attention so they can annoy them and interrupt them and tell them that there's no Santa Claus or Easter Bunny or Jeebus? Yeah. This the prophecies which have been spoken by the prophets concerning the coming of Christ. Where exactly does that happen? I know, I've been pointed to those. Uh, I wrote a, there's a link below where I blogged about that. Kind of cute. Uh, nothing new. You guys know all this shit probably. Atheists know the Bible better than most Christians. That's the funny thing. Because we get tired of being told we don't know what we're talking about. Why do you think I'm fucking reading this book and documenting it? <laughs> Six. Oh wait, nope, nope. Seven. Now there was no law against a man's belief, for it was strictly contrary to the commands of God that there should be a law which should bring men onto unequal grounds. Uh uh, ain't happening. Eight. Thus saith the Scripture. Choose ye this day 
For ye will serve, and according to the footnote, that's Joshua 24, 15. A really spiritual book, you know, where they, since eviction hadn't been invented yet, you know. <laughs> they had to, like, slaughter every fucking person there, or enslave them. Something to emulate, I guess. I'm not up to that. Uh, eight. Uh, no. Uh, nine. <laughs> now, if a man desired to serve God, it was his privilege, or rather, if he believed in God, it was his privilege to serve him. Go get him something. He must want something. Maybe some Kool-Aid. Or is it Flavor-Aid? Uh, but if he did not believe in him, there was no law to punish him, just like now, so far. <laughs> uh, ten, but if he murdered, he was punished unto death. We're a little more enlightened than that. We don't always knock someone off just because they knock someone off. Even sometimes when they've knocked off several someones, because it's just so damn fucking expensive. <laughs> Maybe get him to knit something or do some fucking work. <laughs> and whatever. <sighs> but if he murdered, he was punished unto death. And if he robbed, he was also punished. So somebody probably robs him back. <laughs> and if he stole, he was punished. So somebody probably fucking stole from him. I mean, you murder a guy who murders somebody, so you gotta fucking steal from somebody who steals, I guess. Yes. Oh, you don't have anything? Well, that kidney looks kind of nice. This kidney, that's sick. All right. <laughs> and if he committed adultery, he was also punished. I wonder how. <laughs> that's right. Death! God. Yea, for all this wickedness, they were punished, and it's death according to Le Levitical law, and I believe Sharia probably too. Fucking wonderful. So enlightened. Eleven. For there was a law that men should be judged according to their crimes. Nevertheless, there was no law against the man's belief, or lack thereof. Therefore, a man was punished only for the crimes which he had done. Therefore, all men were on equal ground. Really? Let's find out how equal they are. Yeah, I believe this chapter will uh, put the lie to that one. Uh, Twelve, but this Antichrist, capitalized too, whose name was Cory Hor. Uh oh, he his name ends with an H O R. It's got a whore in it. Cory Hor instead of a uh, knee whore. Another bad guy named Hor. Uh, <laughs> in parentheses and the law could have no hold upon him in parentheses. Like you already said in the letter. Began to preach unto the people that there should be no Christ. Which you also said before in verse 6. 13. O ye this is him talking now. O ye that are bound down under a foolish and vain hope, why do ye yoke your, yourselves with such foolish things? Why do you look for a Christ? For no man can know of anything which is to come. 14. Behold, these things which ye call prophecies, which 
ye say are handed down by holy prophets, because they're prophecies, you have one, you are one. Behold, they are foolish traditions of your fathers. Oh, that's a fucking harsh shit. He's gonna go to the fucking Nephites and Zarahemla and talk shit about their father's traditions? Why, you only do that to the fucking Nephites. I mean, the Lamanites, excuse me, who live in Nephi. It's confusing. How dare you talk shit about the traditions of their fathers? Missionary training. Fifteen. How do ye know... This is Cory Hoare talking. Uh, oh, they're surety. Really, how do you? <laughs> Behold. Ye cannot know of things which ye do not see. Therefore, ye cannot know that there shall be a Christ in about B.C. 74. They didn't even put an asterisk next to it. They're like hiding. It's like before they were so sure. Now they're back to the about, I guess. Ipso facto. I guess. Sixteen, ye look forward and say that ye see a remission of your sins. But behold, it is the effect of a frenzied mind, and this derangement of your minds comes because of the traditions of your fathers, which led you away into a belief of things which are not so. Imagine somebody saying that to the Nephites. Seventeen. And many more such things did he say unto them, telling them that there could be no atonement made for the sins of men. Oh, you mean if you're like a fucking horrible, rotten person, you can't dump your sins at the last minute, and suddenly never pay for them? Actually, whatever, I'm not going to go Alright. Atonement. Someone else is going to... I'm sorry. They kicked my ass. And you could throw your sins into that fucking bonfire. This seems like it would encourage more sin instead of discourage it. Just kind of thinking. <laughs> but every man fared in life according to the management of the creature. All right, we're using language of Paul's epistles now. Therefore, every man prospered according to his genius. Oh, that ain't fair. And that every man conquered according to his strength. And whatsoever a man did was no crime. All right, now there's a little straw man thrown in there at the last second there. That annoyed me. I don't agree with that. I just don't believe there's going to be a divine punishment. And isn't that too fucking bad? I would like that. According to someone's actions a lot of Christians probably being rotisserie right now. Eighteen. And thus he did preach unto them, leading away the hearts of many, causing them to lift up their heads in their wickedness. Isn't that like a pep talk? <laughs> oh, self-esteem. No, no, no. Don't you dare! Causing them to lift up their heads in their wickedness. Yay! Leading away many women and also men to commit whoredoms. Why did you say leading away many people then? Because there's no old people and children thrown in, so you had to be specific. And... Or maybe... To say many people 
takes more characters in Reform Egypt than uh, many women and many men and also many men. You're running on gold, dickheads. The causing them to commit whoredoms, telling them that when a man was dead, that was the end thereof. No! Annihilation? Fuck that. Let's believe in some mythology instead. Because that is preferable. You can't handle the truth. You can put an operating system over the DOS. But the DOS is the truth and the operating system is only symbolic. <sighs> 19. Now this man went over to the land of Jershom also because it kicked him out of the other land, Zarahemla, <laughs> apparently, or yeah. uh, to preach these things also among the people of Ammon, those uh, anti-Nephite Lehi's, who were once the people of the Lamanites. 20. But behold, they were more wise than many of the Nephites. For they took him, these pacifists, bound him and carried him before Ammon, who was a high priest over the people. We can't kill him, but you can. Right? Ah, shit. This is gonna... This is a long-ass chapter. I love it. Do I break? Fuck, I better break. All right. To be continued in verse 21, please check this out. It gets better. It's much worse. You know what I mean? Stay tuned.